Hey there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and today I am bringing back the Lightroom Weekly Edit Series. And as you can see, I am doing so from my nifty iPad. Let's see here. Oh, I went into horizontal or I mean vertical mode here. Hold on a second. Um, as you can see, the app is pretty awesome looking. I really wish it would come out for other tablets, Windows tablets and phones. ASAP, so hopefully Adobe is working on that. Currently, it is only available for the iPad. Either way, I did want to give you guys a little bit of an overview of how I would call and oh, my overall workflow. So let's do that as our weekly Lightroom edit. I'm going to filter by the unflagged images here. As you can see, I click on the very top menu thing and then I click on unflagged. And that way, it will only show me the unflagged images. So if I tap on this image, if I tap on this little option down here to bring up the thumbnails, then I can see those. And then to flag an image, all I do is I tap and scroll up or down to mark it as a pick or reject. And if I wanted to, usually what I would do on my iPad is I would just swipe down to reject it and just tap, tap, tap. I don't want this or swipe, swipe, swipe. I mean, I don't want this one. I don't want this one. I do like this closer up one here, but let's scroll ahead, just skip ahead really quick and see. I want to flag this one as a keeper. Now, unfortunately, it's going to disappear because I can only flag one flag at a time, but that's okay because I already know which one I want and I'm done culling that scene. Here's one of the photos that I used in the review. Let's just scroll through really quickly and check out some of the other photos. I don't want to edit all of these in a single video because that would get a little bit lengthy. But I do know that I've got a few favorites in here. Let's go back to grid mode and let's see. There's got to be a few favorites. I know where they are. I'm just looking for them. Yeah, this is one of my favorites right here. I'm going to flag that one as a pick. There's a few others that are pretty good. But uh, let's move along and see if we can find some others. Oh, here's another one. See, this photo right here was actually processed on my desktop using the SLO Lounge preset system. I've got a warm, vintage fade looking going on here. And that's what I wanted to go for with this session. This image here, on the other hand, is the unedited version. And I'm going to try and edit it using the iPad to match what I got on the computer. I don't know if I'll do it perfectly, but we'll give it a try. So I'm going to flag that one and flag this one. And then let's move along and see if there's any other photos I want to edit. I think there is uh, this one right here, just a little detail photo. And then this one right here looks kind of cool. And then let's go back and filter by picked. And here we go. This looks good, ready to go. Let's start with this image here. And to get to the editing adjustments, I just click on the slider option down here. Usually auto tone is hilariously off as in most uh, photo processing software. But in this case, it does seem to have done a great job. And also considering that uh, auto tone doesn't affect white balance, I'd say that it did a pretty darn good job once I get my white balance up here at about 6,000 or so where I want it. The tint is a little bit off uh, just because that's a weird import thing with Nikon NEF files in Adobe. And there we go. I really like it. Let's see what the auto tone did. It did exposure plus 0.75, a little bit of contrast and a little bit of uh, highlight preservation, but popping the whites. The blacks are at negative 31. The shadows are at plus 13. That sounds exactly like what I would have done if I were processing this photo normally. What I am going to do, last but not least, is dial the clarity down. That's one thing that I like to do with the SLR Lounge preset system, or I mean to say, that's one thing that the SLR Lounge preset system does for me automatically. And then last but not least, let's do a little bit of positive vibrance, just because these Bougainvillea flowers here really ought to pop. I think I want to do, I don't want to, I'll, I'll, go, I'll get into the faded cross-processing later, but for now, I do want to apply just a little bit of a vignette. Let's see how this looks. I think I went too far. Let's turn the vignetting back to vignette one, and let's call that good. Last but not least, I did want to apply a little bit of a crop here, so let's go in and tap on the 16 by nine ratio here and scroll it up just a little bit so that it gets a rule of thirds with it. We're roughly, roughly around our eyes, and uh, that's great. So I'm gonna click back here, 
and let's hide the uh, thumbnail so I can see this full screen. To check and uh, see the before and after, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap and hold with three fingers and it's going to show me that really quickly. I really like how that shows up and hides. It's one of the cooler things about uh, showing other people. If anything, you know, you're just kind of playing around among other photographers. You can, uh, you know, the iPad app seems to be very useful for this kind of collaboration and tutoring and that kind of stuff. So there you have it. This image is done. Let's check out these other images here. Uh, I want to edit this one and I definitely want to go for a very bright high key and warm look. So let's scroll back here to the uh, temperature and firstly let's get that way up to about 6,6500 6, or something. And now I want to try getting some color cross processing or something in here but I just don't think it's going to turn out. This is an example of their cross-processing options. They've got a few others and they look okay, but direct positive should be an undo kind of an option here. They look they look pretty good, you know, and if this is what you're going for, then it's very Instagrammy and uh, you've got some, you know, you've got some pretty cool options here. But for me, it's just not what I was going for. I wasn't going for that vintage look. I just wanted to make my photo fade a little bit. So I'm going to go back to direct positive or maybe direct positive isn't exactly what I thought it was. Maybe it's still applying some sort of weird processing. So I'm just going to hit the undo button tapping down here in the lower right corner and go all the way back to the temperature edit that I did just so that I know for sure I've got the image exactly where I originally had it. And here we are back again. I want it to be warm so I'm going to go all the way way overboard to about 7,700 Kelvin. And to try and attempt a fade what I'm going to do is maybe I'll dial the contrast up but then I'll take the blacks and push them into oblivion to really push them out and kind of fade the image. Maybe I'll drag the shadows down to kind of keep a little bit of pop in certain areas. And I think that looks pretty good for a colored fade look, considering that I don't have RGB curves adjustments. So that's pretty awesome. Let's check out the next image. Oh, wait, you know what? I wanted to do a black and white version of this. So let's check that out really quick. The black and white filtering options are actually really powerful in Lightroom Mobile. And I'm pretty happy with the options. You've got blue filters, which of course will not be good for skin tones or flowers and fields, as you can see down here in the, uh, in the bottom areas and stuff. It's not really going very well. Uh, usually for portraits, I want a warm type of filter. Red is a little bit over the top in this case because I have my uh, temperature way, way up. Orange or yellow might be better. I think orange in this case is the best filter here. Now I could try the toning. They do have a little, they have some split tones and they have uh, some sepia tones. I, I really like the uh, split tone number one and the antique light. Oh, not so much the antique light in this particular situation. The split tone number one seems to be the only thing that is, uh, or these split tones in general seem to be the split tones that are pretty close to what we give in the SLO Lounge preset system. So I'm pretty happy with this one right here. I love it. Both the color version and a black and white version. Unfortunately, I can't make virtual copies in Lightroom Mobile, so I'll just have to redo that when I get back on the computer. Let's check out this image here. I want to make it look like this one. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to dial it up with the exposure. Well, let's first, let's just for fun, let's try auto tone. Yeah, see, that doesn't seem to be doing much and it's not really along the lines of my direction. So I'm just gonna do this all manually. I'm gonna tap the uh, exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna tap the temperature up a lot more and I'm just gonna cheat and go back and forth constantly from these two, between these two images. Let's see, exposure way up, looks good. Uh, tint is at negative seven again. That's just the weirdness of Adobe. I'm gonna dial that up maybe get a little bit excessive with it. Since I don't have RGB curves or split toning, I'm gonna have to cheat and use tint to try and overly warm and kind of tweak uh, the colors in the image and see if I can get it to look, uh, you know, vintage and faded. I do think it needs a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna bump up the contrast a little bit. I might preserve some of the highlights and whites just a little bit. If I need to, I can hold down two fingers and see exactly what is blowing out here. If you see, I can dial it down. This is just the red channel though. So if I dial it way up, you can see that more channels start blowing out, but I'm gonna leave it somewhere right around here. Negative 50 seems to be right. Yeah, that's great. That looks good. 
it's definitely not the same as this actually I think I might even want to dial the exposure up on this particular image as well and see how that looks maybe just a third of a stop or so and then coming back to here it makes me think you know kind of finding a middle bit of a middle ground I may want to dial this down just a little bit on the exposure maybe just under one stop brighter and this has started looking pretty awesome here on this computer I'm gonna go back to my loop view here and uh, kind of get this a little bit bigger I think it looks great so far beautiful maybe still a little bit too bright but I'm actually kind of liking it right now so let's move on to these last few images here this one I'm really not sure what to do I think we might have used the gold side of the reflector uh, on purpose or on accident I'm not sure but it looks really cool and it's got this warm tone going on here let's try auto hey look auto did a decent job uh, let's add some contrast though and let's get some shadows going back into this image or something like that and let's definitely crop this to be a panorama just like the other one I'm definitely liking the panoramic crops for these ones here and let's go back I'm also really liking the idea of negative clarity on this image because I was shooting very wide angle so there's not much bokeh at all I'm going to really try and dial the uh, clarity down and let's see how far maybe all the way down to negative 20 or 30 or so that might look good at the same time I want to bring a lot of vibrance into this image and that looks beautiful I do need to tweak the tint just a little bit give it a little bit more pink maybe I need to cool it down I'm not sure this is looking pretty good right around 6,000 or so Kelvin and then let's definitely top it off with some vignetting I'm going to click on the effects here. I'm going to try vignette one, try vignette two. Let's see what vignette two looks like. I'm really liking this, but I do need to check my exposure just to see if there's anything blowing out. It looks like I'm not, I don't have any black shadows. I, I really thought that I might. Or maybe exposure simply isn't warning me about shadow issues. So let's try the blacks. Yeah, see, I'm definitely losing a lot of these shadows here. And I'm going to bring this back up here until I'm stopping. I'm not losing any more of these shadows. Hopefully this looks good. Yeah, that looks great. I've still got this awesome vignetting going on. I've got these awesome colors. And there we go. Here's another image that would probably look awesome with an orange black and white filter. Let's try maybe red this time. Ooh, red looks great in this situation. Red high contrast maybe. That's beautiful. Sweet. All right, let's check out this last image here and then call it a day. What can Autotune do? Hey, Autotune looks great. Of course, clarity needs to go down just a little bit for portraits and stuff like this. Vibrance could stand to go up since it's a detail shot. And let's warm it up since it's uh, post sunset or right around sunset and we're in the shade. I'm definitely loving it right there like that. Let's also try that trick that I did about cranking the blacks all the way up to plus 100 and then cranking the shadows down to kind of compensate to maybe give it more of a vintage feel. I don't think it worked in this situation. So let's go back to black and try dialing it back down to around 50 maybe. That's probably as good as we're gonna get with a vintage fade type look here. Maybe bring the contrast up a little bit more. And there we go, we're looking great. Let's check out the images here really quick just to see what we've got going on. This one turned out fantastic. If I wanna see my camera settings here, I'll just tap with two fingers just so you guys can get an idea of what's going on here. And let's check out these other images here. Looking cool. Yeah, the histogram actually looks pretty good on this one. And let's see how this one looks, if I clipped the blacks or anything. Looks beautiful. I shot this photo on my Nikon D5300 with the ultra wide angle lens. And there you have it, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take care.